Today we are diving into the wild and wacky world of Mitsuyasu Maeno, the kamikaze pilot who took a detour through the world of adult entertainment. Now you might be thinking, wait, did I just hear that right? Oh you did. This isn't your average tale, clearly. A guy goes from the glitz and glams of the porn industry to the high stakes drama of kamikaze attacks, all while having a flirtation with the Yakuza. Stick around, because by the end of this episode, you'll have learned more about Mitsuya Sumaino than you ever thought possible. Welcome to Asia Obscura. Please like, share, and subscribe for more Asian stories. Mitsuyasu Maeno didn't exactly start life with a silver spoon. Marriages came and went, two to be exact, and if that's not enough drama, he even faced the dark cloud of suicide. Now let's talk about Mitsuyasu's rendezvous with the far-right ultra-nationalists. Imagine a world where ideologies clash, and one man's influence sparks a fire. Enter Yukio Mishima, a political author with a vision to bring back the good old samurai days. So Mitsu Yasu, in the pursuit of identity or maybe just some good old fashioned drama, gets swept up in Mishima's grand ideas. So here's the deal. Mishima believes Japan is turning into the island of pacifist. He wants to hit the rewind button, restore the divine emperor to its former glory, and bring back the good old Japanese military. Mitsu Yasu, inspired by Mishima's grand vision, decides, why not join the writers? Suddenly, our man is on a crash course from softcore films to hardcore nationalism. So what's a disgruntled ex-fanatic to do? Well, he decides to take matters into his own hands, or more to the fact, his own plane. So let's flash back to the world of Mitsuyasu's adult film career. So imagine this, you're an inspiring actor. Maybe dream of walking the red carpet and suddenly you decide, you know what, let's skip the glitz and glam and head straight for the X-rated skies. Tokyo Emmanuel. Mitsuyasu, the maverick that he is, decides to spice things up by performing uh, adult activities while flying a plane. Mitsuyasu was an amateur pilot, registered to the Taiyo Flying Club. So he wasn't just winging it in front of the camera, he was a legit frequent flyer in both the skies and well, you know. Now let's introduce a character who played a crucial role in turning Mitsuyasu's admiration into a kamikaze mission of a different kind. Enter Yoshio Kodama, a Yakuza boss and right-wing leader. Now picture this, Kodama, a man with a pension for both the underworld and right-wing politics, he was released as a class A war criminal after World War II. Fast forward to the 70s and Kodama's caught up in the Lockheed bribery scandal. This wasn't your run-of-the-mill scandal, it was like a Japanese Watergate. Lockheed, the aircraft company, had been bribing officials worldwide and Kodama was deep in the mix. To Mitsuyasu, the scandal was a dishonorable act, a betrayal of the samurai code, and supposedly everything Kodama stood for. So here's Mitsuyasu, our kamikaze protagonist, plotting away, picture him doing reconnaissance flights over Kodama's neighborhood. But wait, how does one acquire a plane for such a daring mission? Well, Mitsuyasu, being the visionary he was, decided to rent not one but two planes, and a cover story? Oh, it's a gem. They told the airport staff they were shooting a movie about kamikaze pilots. Mitsuyasu, always a method actor, even had his friends do a photo shoot in front of the Piper Cherokee he'd be flying. I mean, if you're going out in a blaze of glory, might as well make it look cinematic, right? Now here's where it gets interesting. Mitsuyasu, with his kamikaze entourage, finally arrives over Kodama's house. At this point, it's like an action movie. But the only action star is a disgruntled former porn actor with a plane. What could go wrong? Then the moment arrives. He dives straight into the wrong side of the house. Yep. Our kamikaze maverick missed his mark. Mitsuyasu's plane hits the balcony on the second floor, turning it into a temporary bonfire. But the real punchline, Kodama, the target of this grand aerial spectacle, is chilling on the opposite side of the house wrapped in a cozy blanket. To add salt to the wound, Kodama gets carried out of his house barely injured while Mitsuyasu's plan is in shambles. Stay tuned for the conclusion. Mitsuyasu's grand plan turns into a fiery fiasco, Kodama untouched, and our kamikaze pilot dead on the spot. 
Mitsuyasu's associates, the right-wing crew, gather outside Kodama's house for his showdown with the cops. Now here comes the plot twist. Mitsuyasu, despite turning himself into a kamikaze barbecue, didn't completely fail. Kodama, the bribery maestro, gets arrested, but the trial's delayed because, surprise, he's ill. But wait, there's more. On the 17th of January 1984, Kodama exits the stage. Not a grand courtroom exit, mind you, a stroke. So justice served? Not exactly, because Kodama's trial never happens, and his story ends then and there. A failed kamikaze plot, a postponed trial, and a stroke to wrap it all up. It's the kind of story that makes you go, wait, did that really just happen? Spoiler alert, it did. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Asia Obscura. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have your own stories to share or topics you'd like us to explore, feel free to leave a comment. Until next time, stay curious, stay passionate, and stay tuned.